T-minus four, three, two, one. The following is a 24 hours podcast. We, we all sit here today on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish First Nation. Every, the four First Nations, four first, host First Nations, for the first time in Olympic history, we have four host First Nations. The Musqueam, the tsleil the Squamish, and the Little One, all coming together in the spirit of commitment to one another and a commitment to excellence. We are all exceptionally lucky to be living in this time. We're all exceptionally lucky to be living in this place, in this province, and in this country at this time. We can be an example for the world. The Olympics is a unifying force, brings together humanity around positive, positive aspects of their lives. Who do you believe, the Premier or the people? The two-year countdown to the 2010 Winter Olympics was marked on February 11th by a protest by anti-Olympics natives who say Vanock and the four host First Nations have no grassroots support. Already Olympic construction and expansion of roads, highways and ski resorts, including fake snow made with sewage, has disrupted and destroyed trap lines, hunting grounds, salmon stocks, mountain animal habitats and sacred sites. Our blood and the blood of the land has been spilled for the games and the government to profit. Despite Vanock's claim to be the most green games, so far they are demonstrating to be the most blood red games. Supposedly so-called BC is the best place to live on earth, yet for indigenous people, British Columbia has only served to wreak havoc on the lives of our land and our people. Olympic myth-making and corporate brainwashing attempts to hide the fact that while Canada remains one of the richest country, countries, it remains home to approximately 300,000 homeless people, while another 1.7 million residents struggle with housing issues. Indigenous people account for 30% of this homeless population, despite making up under 5% of the total population. While Olympic organizers operate with a budget of almost $2 billion, Vancouver is now home to North America's fastest growing homelessness crisis. I want Premier Corey Campbell to know, are you scared of me? Be a man and talk with the real people. I can ask him one question and I would have him silent just like my chief and council. We have no financial credibility in our nation. And there's millions and millions of dollars going missing right here in Squamish Nation. The Squamish, the Little Rock, the Salewatu, the Musqueam may be big partners of ours throughout this. Uh, and I think that those uh, communities would all say that this is a time, I think, that the, the Olympics is a good example of the partnerships that can be built between First Nations and non-First Nations. Uh, you know, again, I think that the First Nations are like the rest of us. So, you know, unanimity is not something that will be, uh, I think, the, you know, you won't, be regular, won't be found very often. I think in terms of uh, the initiatives to, uh, to reduce poverty in the province, I think a strong economy is part of that, low unemployment is part of that, higher wages are part of that. Uh, the initiatives we've undertaken with regard to homelessness are part of uh, reaching out and, and dealing with the challenges that people face with regard to that. Uh, all of those things, I think, are part of being a strong community and a strong society. We expect to see the entire Aboriginal community of Canada engage in the Cultural Olympiad to be engaged in the Games every which way we can. Everywhere we've gone in Canada, uh, we've been warmly received by, by First Nations, by the Métis, by Aboriginal groups, by the Inuit. Um, as we cross the country with the torch relay, we'll be visiting those communities. Our job is to engage and to, to, uh, to give every Canadian a chance to be part of this. We're doing everything we can to live up to that. That's what's expected of us. None of the four host First Nations has a treaty despite negotiations since the early 1990s. The games begin February 12, 2010. Hey, hey. Twenty-four hours. Ca.